When you think of the British royal family, we often imagine timeless traditions, iconic palaces, and public displays of grandeur. But behind the pomp and ceremony lies a well-oiled machine, the firm. Not just a family, but a corporation. And in this world, the family members are more like employees, faces of the brand, while the real decisions are made behind closed doors by the powers that control this centuries-old institution. Welcome, this is Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonia. Thank you for spending some of your valuable time here with us. This is part two of Breaking the Silence. And in this episode, we tackle the firm. Think of the British monarchy, not as a family, but as a multi-billion dollar corporation with one of the longest brand histories in the world. The monarch may be its CEO in title, but much like the figurehead of any large corporation, the real control lies with those operating behind the scenes. From the 20th century onwards, the British monarchy transformed itself from ruling with absolute power to becoming a constitutional symbol. But make no mistake, the firm evolved into a finely tuned machine, carefully designed to preserve the monarchy's wealth, influence, and public image. Like a company safeguarding its assets, it has done whatever it takes to stay relevant and powerful. Let's pull back the curtain. You might imagine that the monarch calls the shots, but in reality, the firm is more like a boardroom with shadowy decision makers, advisors, courtiers, senior officials, they operate like the board of directors in a Fortune 500 company. These individuals, often faceless to the public, are the ones guiding the direction of the royal brand. Who exactly makes the big decisions? It's not always the king or the queen. When Prince Harry spoke about walking behind his mother's coffin, he said, they, they made him do it. But who is they? Within the firm, they refer to internal powers, courtiers and officials whose priority is not family, but preserving the public image of the monarchy. It's like a CEO being advised by their board to follow the company's best interest rather than their own personal desire. Now, let's talk numbers. The firm isn't just a metaphor. It's a literal financial empire. The monarchy manages billions in assets and property holdings ranging from the Crown Estate, which generates enormous profits, to private income sources like the Duchy of Cornwall. These estates 
bring in vast amount of wealth that sustain the royal lifestyle. But they also blur the lines between public duty and private enterprise. The sovereign grant, the monarchy's annual public funding, is like a corporate budget. It's provided in exchange for the crown estate's profits and keeps the wheels of the firm turning. But here is where it gets tricky. While the royal family lives in luxury, British taxpayers foot much of the bill for maintaining royal palaces and covering the cost of ceremonial roles. Charles, for example, inherited Queen Elizabeth's private estate worth over $737 million without paying, you know, that 40% inheritance tax that the average British person has to pay. Meanwhile, ordinary citizens face increasingly economic pressures. The family is shielded by financial structures that most people would never be able to access. It's the ultimate corporate protection. Now, let's turn to the women of the firm. Those who marry into this corporate behemoth, entering the royal family is not a fairy tale as many have dreamt. It's a high pressure job. Their every move is scrutinized, their appearance is judged, and their voices often silenced. Take Princess Diana, for instance. She walked into the firm like a breath of fresh air, beloved by the public for her warmth, and people were able to relate to her. But inside the palace walls, she struggled with the suffocating expectations placed upon her. Diana's story isn't unique. Kate Middleton also faced intense scrutiny before and after her marriage to Prince William, learning quickly how to navigate the firm. It demands that you do. Yet even she faced constant judgment from the media. And then came Meghan Markle, an American black biracial woman who defied every royal norm. In any other world, Meghan's arrival would have been a sign of progress. But within the firm, she was seen as an outsider a disruptor. Meghan Markle didn't just step into a royal role, she entered a centuries-old corporate system with rules that seemed designed to exclude her, or better said, people like her, a black biracial person, divorced, an American, the trifecta of qualities that made her stand out like a neon sign in a sea of conformity. And while the public might have seen her as a modern addition to the royal family, the firm viewed her as a risk. Imagine joining a company where despite your successes and popularity, you're constantly undermined. Megan's humanitarian work, her advocacy for mental health, and her outspokenness could have been celebrated. Instead, she was met with resistance at every turn. Why, you ask? Well, because Megan didn't fit into the firm's 
carefully constructed brand. What's interesting is I hear a lot of people saying when speaking about girls empowerment, finding and knowing their worth or women's empowerment as well, you'll often hear people say, well, you're helping women find their voices. And I fundamentally disagree with that because women don't need to find a voice. They have a voice. They need to feel empowered to use it and people need to be encouraged to listen. And I think right now in the climate that we're seeing with so many campaigns, I mean, with Me Too and Time's Up, there is no better time than to really continue to shine a light on women feeling empowered and people really helping to support them, men included in that. I mean, it, it makes such a tremendous difference. So um, yeah, just um, I guess we wait a couple months and then we can hit the ground running. But up until then, I, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> A brand built on predictability and control. Much like any corporation, the firm relies heavily on managing public perception. For decades, the monarchy has enjoyed a symbiotic relationship with the British media. This relationship allows the royals to maintain relevance and secure positive press of course, until someone steps out of line. When Meghan faced racist and misogynistic and, and sexist attacks in the press, the royal family, hmm, silence was deafening. They said and did nothing. Contrast this with the rapid defense the royal family mobilized for Kate Middleton. When rumors swirl about perhaps cosmetic surgery, Botox, the disparity in treatment reveals a selective crisis management strategy. Within the firm, it's not about who needs help, but it's about who fits the corporate image they are trying to protect. The royal family treatment of Meghan Markle wasn't just about race. Although race played a crucial role and still does, it was about protecting the institution. Like any corporation defending its brand, the firm couldn't accommodate Meghan's independence, her modernity, and her ability to connect with people on a global scale. She was unpredictable and unpredictability is bad for business. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is fairest of them all? It brings me no joy to let you know. You are certainly not. You've had no subscribers in the last month. No one likes your content. All of your comments say you are mean. Your sister gets 50,000 likes each video. And she has over a million subs. Impossible! <laughs> I will get more subscribers. I'll just have to take yours, sister. No. You will all regret this. Oh, you will be this my bad. subscriber! You are all mine. Hey, you. You. Yes, you. Okay, who else do you think I'm talking to? You. What are you waiting for? Click on that three thumb up button thingy. Gas the emoji with the thumb up. And here, why haven't you subscribed yet? Just subscribe, who cares? Subscribe. And turn on your notifications. Also listen, share, share, so that we can get more people. No, share the video. And leave comments if you want to. And listen. If you can help us financially to resist this crazy queen, 
you can do so by becoming a member. How? Well, just, just locate where it says join and click on the button that says join. Or you can you, you can send us like a super sticker, like a super thanks or something. Just locate the button that has like a heart. He has a heart. Like 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 a, a like a heart and a dollar sign. Because we need to resist this crazy. She's crazy. And I think she wants to do something to like Snow White or something. It's not Snow White? Cinderella? No? Not Cinderella? What? What's... What fairy tale am I in? Well, welcome back. I hope you're enjoying today's um, episode thus far. So this is a, this is part two of of this series. Um, you know, break in break into silence, and in part one, the the vision for me was to show how colonialism and that history that that Britain has um, and the oppression that they executed in the lands and 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 um countries on onto populations um where they were that air of superiority has not gone away because when i think about it and i think about the horrific things that 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 were that were done and to have soldiers, young men committing these things and just inflicting these kinds of horrific torture on, on, on black and brown bodies, that doesn't just go away, right? that mentality the ability to do that means something means that you have you have detached any sense of humanity to these people because you have to you have to detach any sort of moral value, sense, and not see brown and black bodies as human beings. Because if you do, you will not do the things that was done. So I wanted to connect that because I'm trying, I was trying to understand how can we have an entire institution, which is a company, right it's a company even hr should know better but an entire company just decided no we're just going to let this woman rot the first black biracial woman to enter into the british royal family modern days of what of what we know about and instead of uplifting her and and showing the commonwealth and others that look we have learned we we recognize you as a people and they so tragically failed and they continue to fail because to this day to this day so many things have been said written and still no official word from the palace from the king from the king to be nothing at all 
So what that tells us is that they still do not see black and brown bodies as people. They don't. They don't. I mean, it's, it's a really harsh realization to come to. But they don't. Because if they did, the minute that awful picture was, was published with two people holding a chimpanzee leaving a clinic, something should have been written immediately condemning it. What was done? Nothing. Nothing was done. It reminds me of the, the, the race riots not too long ago. You're the head of state. You're the head of this country. Of the United Kingdom. And not a word. Not a word for days. And then some politician or some whomever come, oh, well, you know, the king has been watching what's happening and he's really happy that people are coming together. What, are they good people on both sides? Are they good people on both sides? Were the people who wanted to burn down hotels with migrant women, children, frightened people, Were they good people? Were they? And still, the head of state said absolutely nothing. Nothing. Not a word. Oh, well, he can't be political, you'd say. He has to stay in the margins and all of that. He cannot be political at all. Can be, can be what? Are you trying to just... um? make a mockery of my intelligence? Come on. So, so, so to see all of those things, right? I, I was, I wanted, I started to do research and, and started to, 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 to look at examples. And then all, it, it all just started to come together. And then all of a sudden I went, aha. They would never, they, they, they weren't going to accept her. Even if the royal family, which is the face of the monarchy, the face of the firm, right? Even if they were okay with her. Oh, King Charles walked her down the aisle. Yeah, for like two minutes. That benefited him also. Right? So, even if they were okay with it the institution wasn't these old young middle aged I don't know probably mostly men you know if the ones that were working with William are any example then we know the kind of rot that exists. Because I kept thinking, all right, the family is the family, right? They're, they, they, they're there to show stability, continuity, and all that nonsense, right? Well, it's not nonsense, but you get my drift here. They are the face. It's, 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 it's as if you were hired, you know, every, every, um, according to hierarchy, you, you, you're hired to do the campaign for the product. The product is the monarchy, right? So you come out and they tell you, okay, so you're going to go out, you're going to give a speech, you're going to say this, you're going to say that, you're going to stay away from that, don't answer that, okay. And you go, you do and you leave, and that's it. So my 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 
my aim then went to the institution. How can you fight something that's invisible? Because you know the institution exists, you know there's people who are up and down the institution, there you know there's people who are making decisions on behalf of the institution because their role it's not it's not it's not it's not about the queen, it's not about the king. Their role is to protect by all means the crown, the institution. So it continues to exist. What they fail to understand though is that it also needs to adapt faster than it's doing right now. Because all that fuss was made, you know, half in half out. What is William and Catherine doing right now? It's not even half in half out. It's like a quarter in and three quarters out because, you know, and and listen, don't come don't 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 come for, for me about cancer or, or any of that. Right? I've 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 had my 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 mother go through cancer. I we thought we we I mean I I, I, I was saying my goodbyes to my mother. So I, I, I fully know what it feels like. I, I fully know what that journey is like and how painful it is. I also had an uncle who went through it. And because my school was a few blocks away from where my uncle lived, his home, he had become so frail, so frail. So I took care of him from Monday to Friday. I went to school during the day, finished school, went back, and I, I stayed there, I took care of him. And I saw what cancer did to him. Painful. I have a friend who also went through cancer. And I have a friend right now who we almost lost a couple weeks ago and it was quite difficult for me to even talk about it because it's 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 here it's it's real and i will tell you none of them not one of them or anyone that i know and listen people i get it i get it oh well it affects people differently chemo affects people differently i get it i'm just i'm just expressing my thoughts and my experiences, my experience. None of them look like Kate. None of them, not, 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 not after chemo, not after what, 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 what the, the, the disease to their, their bodies, their, their 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 mental health, their mobility. So don't come to me and say, oh, poor thing or poor... Listen, I am very happy that the pre-cancer or the post-cancer is, 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 is okay. The, the, the pre-chemo or the post-chemo also went well. I am happy. And listen, I'm just going by what they have said. This is not me trying trying to be facetious or anything like that. This is what they said. Right? But my point being is that when Harry and Meghan said, listen, what the press is doing, what the media is doing is unacceptable. And it's 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 damaging our mental health to a degree that that we don't want to get to a place where there's no return and we would like to continue to support the monarchy continue to work and egos got in the way insecurities got in the way 
Now, for to those people who don't want to recognize that, let me tell you something, my friends. You are doing the future of the monarchy no good. For all those royal rota, for all those people who like, oh, and William did this. He went to the, and he picked up a little bird on the road. And the little bird was so happy to see the future king. And the little bird said to him, Write something real. Say something real. Oh, and, 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 and the princess, you know, she was, she was just so calm. She was so calm in the middle of the desert with an, 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 an outrageous amount of, 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 of tornado. She was just exemplar in, in just her demeanor. She, I mean, I was terrified, of course, because I'm a commoner, you see, I'm a commoner, but, but she was just so royal, so regal, not like certain people from California, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Grow up. Grow up. If at all you've got a journalism degree, do journalism. Because what you're doing is not journalism. You people, the, the legacy you leave, because you're all going to die. We all, we all, we all going to die. And your legacy is that you bullied, harassed, and wrote stories that were false about a woman, a black biracial woman, knowing the history, if you do or not, the history of Great Britain and the horrific things it did during the colonizations of, of, of a quarter of, of the world. And the first person of color, black or brown skin that enters into that family, you all decide to show that the colonialistic mindset is still in you. Still in you. How sad. Folks, folks, <laughs> I completely, I completely lost track of time. I went into like a tunnel vision with my discussion or <laughs> my thoughts and completely just, just like everything else did not matter. I, I just kept talking and I have things to finish here. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You folks must be asking or saying, okay, he's been talking now for 15 minutes. When are we getting to commentary? <laughs> I am so sorry. My apologies. Um, all right. So this, 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 this episode here, um, the tragic loss of Liam Payne and media harassment of Meghan Markle. Um, just, just the news alone of, of Liam's past and may he rest in peace and um, our condolences goes out to his his family, his the little boy he leaves behind and all those who have loved him. Uh, mental health is, is, is a very serious, 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 serious. Please take mental health seriously. And if you don't feel okay if you don't feel okay if something is going on just seek help um um doing other things or substances to just numb that pain it doesn't work it doesn't 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 work please 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 you know and let's be kind to people because we never know what what they are going through and for me, when when I I, I saw it, it came up on my phone, and uh, I I just thought, oh, what what a 
what a sick thing to do. Because Liam had been in, in the news sort of lately with a couple of things here or there. And but 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 then I thought I said, yeah, well, let me let me check. Let me just check some other outlets and see if in the rest any reputable outlets are saying anything. And then when I realized that they did, I, I, I just was like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Like it was just a very weird emotion, right? Of someone I, I've never met. I don't know. I know this person through their their artistic self, right? I know this person through music, dance, lyrics. I also know this person through an interview that I, I watched not too long ago where he was on the diary of a C of a CEO. And I just thought, you know, very, very complex, very thoughtful and, and insightful also very honest. Um, and I'll, I'll listen, I, I, I gain extra respect for the man because I, I, I was like, you know, to be that vulnerable, um, which I think is a, extremely important. Not a lot of men um, venture on that road and I would, I would encourage them to do, but I would also would encourage the people around them to, to allow it because we quickly, and this goes both for both genders, male and female, or, or however you may identify, you know, there is these certain v rules and, and, and when I, uh, 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 a, a guy when a man is 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 attempting to be vulnerable i mean there's a whole bunch of names that this person is called and even their own spouse sometimes may just say listen listen nah, i i did I, I didn't marry some person like weak i didn't marry some like what do you want to feely touchy something i don't think so that's not the man i married you see, so all of that becomes very toxic. So when listen, when when a guy wants to be vulnerable or needs to talk, please just just take the time and 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 sit down and listen. And this doesn't go just for men; it goes for women also. Please, when a woman wants to sit down and talk and say, "Hey, this is what's going on with me," sit sit down, people, and listen, listen. So I I I then sort of said, "Okay, let me see." you know, what's going to be in, because it was already quite early in the morning in the UK. Let me see what, what they're going to have on their, you know, um, on the newspapers and the tabloids, what's going to be the cover. And I wasn't thinking of, of, of writing anything. And then when I saw the two um, front page, of that tabloid and and i kind of because there was another tabloid I, I looked at and they the front page was 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 all liam and i thought it, it kind of stopped me because i thought liam liam is 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 the guy was in one direction right famous this this this, this band is known around the world you know it it sort of is the band of of a certain generation and what struck me at that moment in time is that i looked at their at the two covers the one where 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 um liam is on and the one where he's he's not because um and i i, I thought megan markle and prince harry that real estate on that front cover, that front page of that newspaper, the editors were not willing to give that real estate up for anyone, not even for the passing of a very famous person. So then I say, it's not something I don't know. It's not something you don't know. The Sussexes make these people money bags and bags of money 
So they are laughing all the way to the bank by torturing. If you guys go back to what they did in colonialism time, they're still doing it today by torturing the Sussexes and especially Meghan Markle. Right? They did not lose that, that piece of real estate about them possibly having bought a home in Portugal. And that, honestly, it, it kind of kind of struck me. I was like, oh, okay. And thoughts kept coming to my head and, and I kept going, okay, I need to write, I need to write, I need to. So I started to just write and, and you know, because sometimes I tr I'm trying to make sense of, of, of the flood of of, of thoughts that are coming through and, and, and the best way for me is kind of write, writing it down and many times I, I'll start to well not many times I do it all the time I will read back what if, and some of it makes no sense and I'll go what? what does that mean? how am I linking this with this? like that that doesn't make sense but then I'll go oh I see I see I see what I'm trying to do there just to make sure it comes out of my head, goes down on paper, and and then I try to make sense of it. And when I was making sense of it, I, I went, maybe I'll make it an an episode, right? And and just kind of get it out there. So for all the beautiful people that um, commented on that um, post, thank you so very much. Um, so John, Joyce, Sylvia, Nana. Dominica, Anastasia, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Um, I didn't sort of do your comments one by one or anything like that because all of your comments are sort of like in the general theme of, of, of um, as, as John was saying, like, you know, there was a difference between critique and bullying, right? Harassment. Because what they are consistently trying to say is that, well, this is just critique. Why can't she handle critique? I saw this. Um, I think. I think it's in the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's it's in the uh, episode where these. You know what? When when I see these men and women speak the way they speak about Meghan Markle, I i ask god to 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 allow me to see where their humanity is because the disdain in which they speak about this woman that has left left the country a long time ago and has not returned and by the words of her husband he will not allow her to return even if she wanted to. That's his wife and he knows. He knows the dangers that exist. And for all of you who think, oh, well, now when she, what does that mean? What does that mean, the dangers? They went to Colombia, that's so dangerous. It's all the drug lords and all of that. They went to Nigeria. The most disgusting countries in the continent. You baboons it shows how 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 uneducated you are uneducated how you have not traveled you know nothing about culture but to just make these grand statements and on that same network the other one had an entire, what, 15, 16, 20 minutes monologue about why he has the right to critique Meghan Markle and she's not going to tell him what to do and to walk this and to walk that. Oh, shut up and sit down. Shut up. You all just sound like a bunch of spoiled brats. Uneducated. Just creating and 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 be behaving like 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 a child having a tantrum 
I didn't get me, 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 I didn't get it. How could she do this to me? I don't see the happy thing. We're Britain. We're Britain. We're the United Kingdom. We're the big thing. You are the most awful representation of a country, of a great nation. With its flaws and everything else, it, it's 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 colonial past. You're an awful representation of it. You're all like gutter feathers, just just, just in the gutter with 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 with, with swine and the pigs and 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 just and just manure. Your lack of class is astonishing to me. And and that is where that sort of came from, right? To 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 look at the way they keep insisting that this is not bullying, that she's not being bullied, when every single day, every single day for the past eight years. Can you imagine? Imagine every single day for eight years you wake up you turn on your tv and there is four five six seven eight eight shows and all of them have a segment on how awful you are just because you woke up and you took your first breath or something you're the most awful person because you know, you're domineering. You want to be a Hollywood star. You see, Megan wanted to be Hollywood. She didn't see the difference. She never, she never left Hollywood. But she, she thought she was going to be a Disney princess. You f effing moron. You see, the problem with all of you is that you've got such embedded issues that you need to resolve that you never will. James O'Brien talks about this. You never will because you're cowards. So instead of dealing with your issues or issues, what you do is just bully and harass a woman because you can, but because she's colored because she's mixed race, because she's black. You know, I, I would say that's Stan, but you know what? You, you, you people have, uh, have harassed white, blonde, uh, blue eyes women too. Maybe you just have a problem with women. Same as the institution of the monarchy, the firm, seems to have a problem with women. If you do, then just, just say you, none of you are going to be with women. Let women do their thing and you you boys go play with yourselves. I don't know. Stop dragging women in, in, into these conditions. For what? You know, so so for me, sitting down and putting that and 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 trying to show how tabloid press no matter what will still continue their abusive behavior harassment as long as there's money to be made off of you so the whole thing about oh it's just a critique it's not a critique when it's being done every day it's not a critique when five six seven eight networks are doing it it's not a critique when Five tabloids are, are 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 saying awful things about you that they got by the way from a source, a source, this invisible source. It's not journalism. It's fantasy. It's is 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 storytelling, creatively. But do that in a book. Go do it in fiction. Not when you are affecting a person's life. I mean, I've never, ever 
had such an awakening about a country that I used to love. I mean, I still love it. I, don't, I shouldn't say I don't love it. But an awakening. You know, it's, it's, it's just seeing how they have treated Meghan Markle. Coming to the realization and then seeing how all these other parts operate and listening to people. People who believed his nonsense. When you have television announcers advocating for the destruction, the demise of a marriage. That just tells me you don't even have God in your life. And not everyone needs to have God in their life, but that just tells me that you don't even have morals, you don't even have values, you don't even have decency. Because you're actively advocating for the demise of a marriage. Why? You should question yourself and, and try, try and figure out why. And don't bring Megan into this. This is about you. All about you. I think at this point, I'm not going to apologize anymore. Um, because <laughs> again, again, I did it again. Hi. Okay. I, it, this, these, this, this topic is, is just very, it's very close to home, right? Because we, we, on a daily, we read the stuff that is said, we, we discuss them and we we know what it does also to us because i've said this from the very beginning and i'll say it again until the very end megan markle is being used as an example and they will continue to do what they need to do to tear her down because she dared to enter into a space where she wasn't supposed to be. But not only did she enter that space, but she opened the curtains, took the veils off, and showed them how to actually do the work of quote unquote royalty and to do it with such Finesse. Remember, this is supposed to be just, you, you're supposed to be born a royal. Blue blood. Right? And in the aristocratic world, these royal things, because remember, you, you are chosen, ordained by God. Are you really, though? Because it wasn't chosen amount like a pile of people a bunch, a group. You were just a sperm that made it faster to the egg. <laughs> what an example. Thank you, Antonio. Um, yeah, so this, this is, this is the, 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 the initial um, episode, uh, Break Into Silence. Mm -hmm. And this episode was about connecting colonialism, connecting the British Empire, connecting that mentality, and to see, understand why the institution and the family reacted the way they reacted. And the unholy relationship between the British media and... Um, and the royal family and and the firm because i've said this also before if the king king charles the 3rd who has waited 
quite long a period in order to ascend to the throne. And whether he has 10, 15, 20 more years to be on that throne or a year or five, whatever is, is, is in his destiny, he could have been, because I, I, don't, I don't think he will be any longer, but he could have been one of the most consequential monarchs of the United Kingdom. And he would have, or could, could have left such a legacy, a legacy of reform, a legacy of modernity, a legacy of, of breaking down these, these antiquated barriers, a legacy of breaking this teledrama, this telenovela, this soap opera that feeds these bottom feeders in the tabloid press and, and, and in media. And it, it would have been hard. I'm not saying it's all going to be easy, but he could have been, he could have been one of the most consequential kings in history of that institution. And he's nothing. He's just not my king, right? It's, it's just really sad. Anyways, um, thank you all um, who left uh, comments. Um, I'm not going to read all of your names. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Your names are up there. Angela, Reba, um, Sylvia, Nana, Dolores, John Garcia, Connie, um, Jean, uh, Rita, or Rita, uh, Paulette, uh, Essie, uh, TMS, T, T, uh, <coughs> sorry, um, TMCD. Oh gosh, I'm, I'm mispronouncing, I'm mispronouncing because I've heard, I've heard Baron pronounce TM, TMCD, TMCD, Audrey. Now, now, now I'm, now I'm stuck. <laughs> I am. I'm like, uh okay i said i was going to read everyone's name name out and i go and do exactly the thing i said i wasn't going to do tiger mommy three two one jocelyn uh who did i not uh mention okay i'll i'll say the name later because um my screen is covering a couple of names so my apology uh as i'm recording this did I say Sylvia? Sylvia, Essie, uh, Audrey, Dolores, Connie, Joyce, John, uh, Teresia. Um, okay. Hopefully I got most of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I've picked uh, two. I think I may pick another one too. So it might be three um, to sort of talk to or, or, or uh, have a conversation about it. All right, let's get to the first one. Hi, Antonio. Sadly, the Brits have such a long history of cruelty and inhumane treatment of people, yet they choose not to do any better. Happily, I'm so glad that Harry and Meghan left that den of snakes, vipers, etc., and chose not to be stung by them. I know that a power stronger than all those despicable haters is named God who is blessing and covering H&M. I pray for them and Squatties daily. Take care. Joan, thank you very, very, very much. Um, that was wonderful. Joan, I love you. Um, thank you for um, your, your wonderful thoughts, for your continued support on this um, journey and um your insights thank you thank you and thank you um you know oh and thank you for your prayers which is very really important really really important i i i deeply resonate with with what with what you've said um Brit britain 
Britain's colonial history is is indeed filled with 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 horrific things, right? Systematic cruelty, starvation, torture, and dehumanization, where where all tools used to to maintain control over colonized people. The examples we've mentioned, like the horrific torture and deliberate starvation, you know, reveal a mindset that saw certain lives as expendable. It's, it's this same mindset rooted in, in superiority and, and in power that we see reflected in 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 how Megan was well not was but 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 is continued to be treated by the royal family and the British media. You know, colonialism didn't just affect the nations where that were directly oppressed. It it left and it must have left. Scars are not scars on the psyche of those who carried out that oppression. The dehumanization of others be became institutionalized. And it's clear that this mentality, sadly, hasn't disappeared. Megan's rejection and the racist attacks she endured shows that this colonial way of thinking where people of color are treated as inferior or outsiders is still alive. The race riots, politicians, and these are some black and brown politicians that are saying these awful things. I mean, all of this now, you know, we would think it's more disguised than it used to be in the past, but, but people are just showing up and telling us who they are. They're saying these things that I'm going, oh my gosh, you know, Joan, you, you, you're completely right to, to highlight how important it, it was for Megan and Harry to leave that place. They made the brave decision to remove themselves from that toxic environment. And in doing so, they chose their own well-being and peace over tradition or, or, or what, what, whatever duty. It's a powerful testament to their strength and their love for each other. So I know it's going to be disappointing for the Sun and the Inquirer and the and the Daily Disc so, and all the others and those and those and those shows where oh, well you know we've only seen them walk together once this month. The better story is right in front of you, right in front of you. They are the, the, the duty bound. They just the best royals. They they just they just. I mean, let me tell you. They rock a suit. They rock a frock. They rock um, a beard or no beard. They 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 rock here up or down or or, or 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 in a bun, not a bun. They they rock it. So just talk about them. Why don't you just go talk about them? Invent stories about their marriage. Invent stories about their love. Invent stories about their cancer or not cancer. Go, go, go. Rather than 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 being a a, a propaganda, we'll just and 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 and, 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 and with her elegance and her and the properness and her, you know, you all you all wish you were royals, don't you? You all wish you were royals. Guess what? You're not. And guess what? She still has her title. Yeah. She's still a duchess. And guess what? Guess what? No, no, no. Guess, 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 guess. 
if the rules were to be enforced, you would have to bow to her. You would have to, cur- <laughs> do you get it? You would have to curtsy to her. Oh, that stings, doesn't it? Sting like a bee. Let me get back on topic. You know, I, I honestly think that what Megan and Harry did was extremely brave. It was for their well-being. And I am so happy today that they that they did. I also believe, as you do, Joan, that there is a higher power guiding and protecting them. Their journey may, may have been filled with hardship, but it is also one of hope and resilience. And just as they broke free from from the chains of that institution, right? An institution steeped in outdated and harmful ideas. I truly believe that their path will continue to inspire others and 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 they will continue to to stand up against injustices no matter where no matter how you know oh, okay you know Joan thank you so much uh, for your kind words thank you for the prayers and um, for being part of this community I hope you know how much I I, I love you how much I appreciate you and um, thank you once again Antonio, dear, that was a heavy, heartbreaking podcast, but beautifully explained. The photos of our ancestors hanging upside down, being beaten and torched, is unbearable. It's sick what was done to them. And it's still going on today, in disguise and straightforward. Despite of that, it was a beautiful podcast. Thank you, Antonio. Connie, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um... Connie, I hope you know I love you. Um, I, I've been, listen, I've been so blessed to be in this space and to have some of the most wonderful, beautiful, magnificent women um, that have just sort of, in the most interesting way too, <laughs> I'll say. Um, work better. I know something went wrong with the mic and I am sorry about that. So, okay. I think it's working okay now. And I was just saying nice things, Connie. I really was. <laughs> I was just saying how, how, how lucky I am and how fortunate I am to just have these wonderful women in my life right now um, that I absolutely love and 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 are so supportive and and wonderful and just want to say thank you if you were able to hear anything. Okay, let me just carry on. <laughs> um, once again, thank you, thank 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 you so much for that heartfelt um, um, words and for engaging in such a deep um deep way with 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 the episode i completely understand um that some of the depictions in general are so difficult so difficult to to witness i i i share your um that that heaviness you know of of reflecting on the brutality that our ancestors had to had to endure the the images even as artistic rendering or drawings that i try to sort of put there instead of sort of real images um they 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 are a stark reminder of of a past that is not 
that is not so distant and and still lingers in in ways that you mentioned connie um disguised and 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 sometimes painfully visible today you know as someone who tries his best to 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 study history to try and understand uh, that i study black history and try and understand look the horrors of slavery ah I've 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 come to to the realization and this and this is for me that confronting these painful truths is 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 necessary again for me even even when it feels unbearable the depictions even when 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 you see them through drawings or illustrations They, they they still manage right to 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 sort of hold you right hold you and 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 sort of this this compression of of a feeling that 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 is so heavy again that systematic cruelty used to dehumanize and break break our ancestors just just break their spirits these methods of of, of violence torture degradation were designed not just to subjugate you know, to subjugate you, your body, your, 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 your soul, but to crush you, to crush your spirits and to crush your spirits cross generations. That legacy has devastating effects to this day seen in structural racism, economic disparities, and the social injustices that still plague our communities. I know, I know it's hard. It's, 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 it's hard to have to, 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 to look at these, at, at, at the, at the inhumanity. Because no matter how much I try, I, I, I don't understand it, right? And it it brings this emotional weight with it that is so immense. And thinking about that, you know, I I, I had a mini battle with myself whether to include more realistic images, one or two. And I said, well, why do you need to include one or two? These drawings, these illustrations capture enough because it allows us to grasp the horrors without, without overwhelming us, I think. Because watching more natural graphic imagery, it's just, it's just, I mean, I'm not saying we, we don't have to force ourselves ever so often because, you know, we, 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 we need, we need to remember, we need to remember. Because for me, I think that that message still remains, that message of we must remember and we must continue to acknowledge the ongoing impacts of that history. You know, we, we, we carry the strength of those who came before us. And it's through them, I think, that we persevere. 
from them we get certain uh 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 it's the word i'm looking for um re re resilience that we continue to fight for justice by confronting you know these parts of of of, of a very painful history You know, and I was thinking sort of like reclaiming that narrative, but but I, I that that word also just bugs me because when people say, "Oh, I'm reclaiming this and reclaiming that," I'm like, "Who? Don't 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 reclaim it. Just get rid of it. Get rid of it, but but put it somewhere where you can still be reminded of it." You know, we still we still have a we still have a a a a, a, a knee on our, on 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 our necks. I, I I I will tell you this: I did not learn about generational trauma. I think it was two or, or three years ago, perhaps. Um, when 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 the um, the Black Black Lives Matter movement and and you know it, uh, my um, employer at the time had had provided us everyone basically to to and and facilitated these um, psychologist therapists so we, we you know we had these these group sessions and open conversation about the imageries we, we we see on 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 television and what it's doing to us what it's doing to our psyche what kind of story it's telling us about the value of ourselves and that was the first time 3 years ago the first time i heard the word generational trauma well there are two words I was relating something, an experience, and you know, we were talking, I was relating an experience. And for me, it was very sort of like, well, this is what happened, as a matter of fact, blah, blah, blah. And the therapist that was there said, um, she goes, oh, well, Antonio, that is generational trauma. And I said, it, it, it is, it's what, sorry? She goes, generational trauma. I said, I have no clue what that means. And when she explained it, I was like, oh, it felt literally like I've been carrying a sack of potatoes around with me most of my existence and all of a sudden i realized i had a sack of potatoes on my back and knowing what she said and 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 how she explained it and all of that and the experience that i had just convey I was able to kind of take that sack of of potatoes off my back. All of a sudden I understood. All of a sudden I went, oh my. Well, I, I, I used another word, but <laughs> and, and I think that there's so much about understanding history and understanding what it has done to us and understanding how this trauma so grand so great it, it it's been passed on and it's not getting resolved because society is still structured in a way that brown and black bodies have no value so the the violence and the abuse just keeps repeating itself, repeating itself. 
I never thought when I saw that beautiful woman walk in solo by herself into that church, to that cathedral. I could cry right now. The bravery. To watch her. I cannot explain to you, to anyone, what that made me feel. I said, you make us proud. Because you're showing all of them. All of them that you can rewrite your history. That all these influences around the tabloids, all the nonsense, the father that at, 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 at the most in a, inappropriate time decides to become an enslaver. To look at his daughter and for some reason realize that she might not be as white as he thought. So he takes his whip out. And decide to just give her the biggest blow pain that he could and then these people have the audacity to say and what about her father the poor man has never met his grandchildren i wish upon you 10 times what you've wished upon that woman ten times because your fake, your fakery of ignorance, I don't buy it. She walked in, she claimed herself, she claimed her identity, she claimed her womanhood, she claimed her ancestry, and she walked in alone with her head up, her crown on. She didn't need a crown from the royal family of Great Britain. She already had one. And what she did that they did not expect her to do, she reclaimed. She reclaimed her narrative. And they will never forgive her. Because they never wanted her. And that is okay. Because now Millions of us get to see you for what you are. Millions of us. Millions. You couldn't treat her with some dignity and respect. And you still keep harassing her day in and day out for eight years now. And you're the head of the Commonwealth. You invent all these lies and treachery to justify <sighs> Connie, thank you so very much. I thank you for the way you worded that comment because it expressed the the pain that 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 so much of this um, brings to us. 
And at the same time, it was like just this, this beautiful linen or silk <laughs> um, cloth that just said, but it was okay. It was a beautiful podcast. Thank you, Connie. Prince Harry fell in love with Meghan, a biracial woman. She is beautiful, intelligent, and worldly. The firm realized how wonderful she is and tried to get her to leave. Harry left with her. The firm is racist and so is the system in Britain. They can deny till forever, but we know the truth. Thank you, Dolores. Uh, thank you, Dolores. I'm trying to make sure I don't have mic, mic issues again. <laughs> Sorry. Excuse me, sorry about that. I just realized it's actually a, a light below the marker that will show me if it's recording properly. Well, the things you discover last minute. Um, Dolores, thank you. I love you. Thank you so very much. Thank you for always um, being there, um, supporting the channel and the podcast and you know commentaries and and, and all of that I, I really appreciate it thank you so 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 very much your comment um really recognizes the and i think for so many of us right <laughs> recognizes the the beauty in harry and megan's love and I think part of it for us, okay, let me take that back. Part of it for me, look, I'm, I'm, I'm a multiracial person and I've never understood this intrinsic um, need for people who identify a certain way You have to stick with your own, stick with your, your kind. Um, only do this, only do that. I'm, I'm a person who is consistently fascinated by cultures. I want to know more. I want to understand more. And there are things that I'll just love about it. And, and I'll go, okay, from now on, I'm doing that. Because I love this, of that culture. But now we have a name for it, cultural appropriation, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Um, but okay, trust me, I've never gone as bad as appropriate in someone's culture. It's just certain things or habits or a way of looking at life or so on that I've learned through my travels and, and, and that I've incorporated in my mentality or the way I see things, right? That, that is what I mean. I don't mean like that lady who's, who I forgot her name now, but said she was black, but she wasn't black and was running some um, institution or something. Anyways, um, yes, Meg, Meg, Megan and, 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 and Harry's love being so delicious <laughs> uh, and absolutely beautiful. And I think you've, you've hit on, on such a powerful truth and that truth about Megan, you know, about her intelligence, her grace, and worldly experience were exactly the qualities that made her a perfect fit, perfect fit for a modern monarchy. But instead of, of, of embracing her, the firm and and it and it <laughs> oh. and the people behind the firm the system around it chose to see her instead as a threat their inability 
to recognize and value her contributions was a reflection of the deep rooted racism and, and, um, sort of this resistance, rigidity that still exists within um, the walls of the palace or, or, or in that institution. You, you, you're absolutely right. The truth it's plain to see. No matter how much they deny it, the racism and prejudice that Megan experienced speaks volumes about the broader system in Britain. For them, Megan wasn't just another royal bride. She represented change, a break from centuries old norms. And the presence of someone who challenged the very foundations of the monarchy. And instead of evolving, they pushed back and pushed her out in the most harmful way. But the good news here is that Harry see, Harry saw through it. He saw Megan for who she truly is, an incredible, compassionate, and strong woman, and made the brave choice to stand by her and leave behind an institution that refused to change. Together, they, they've shown that, that, that love and integrity are more powerful than the weight of tradition or the toxic forces that try to tear them apart, which I'll never understand to this day. Grown men, grown men and women advocating for the destruction of Harry and Meghan's union. Grown men on television telling Harry, come home, but just you, leave her back. Grown women saying, well, she's the problem. Leave her behind because we can forgive you, but not forgive her. Forgive her for what? Forgive Harry for what? For being honest, not being crooked, not being a liar, not being a cheat, not being toxic, not being a wannabe. He's a royal for whatever that means or stands for in your little brain. And he married a black biracial woman who he's madly in love with, madly in love with. And for those of you that have insinuated that, oh, she must have done something to him. Oh, baby boy, she did. And he liked it. Yeah, is that what you wanna hear? Is that what you wanna hear? Well, guess what? She did, and he liked it. 
So, good riddance. Maybe some of you should try it out. I don't know. Try it out. <laughs> but first, some of you need to come to terms with yourselves. You know? Some of you need to, let me say that again, to come to terms with yourselves. Be more honest with yourselves because, ugh, I think so many of you are projecting. <laughs> oh my gosh, I've got to end this. This is <laughs> this has been really long. I was supposed to end this um, taping a long time ago. Holy macaroni! I've taken like, oh my gosh, the Lotus. Thank you, thank you for sharing your thoughts. Um, I really think it's it's important to continue to speak the truth, no matter how much they may deny it. We've got the receipts. <laughs> thank you, thank you so very much. Um, I appreciate it. Ah. <sighs>